Hello, my name is Marat Yildashev. We are in the beautiful city St. Petersburg, one of the most beautiful cities in Russia. It's 3 o'clock night time, white nights in St. Petersburg. And today we are going to present you our research on phase lock loops, electrical circuit, which is used in mobile phones to increase frequency, to increase performance and to decrease frequency to save the battery. Enjoy! PLL was invented in 1930s by French engineer Henri de Belestise. It was used in radio and TV. In TV it was used to synchronize frames. Consider signal from TV station to the TV box, which transmits sequence of frames. The problem is how to synchronize those frames in the inside TV box, because you can get mixed images like this um, to control that, you should insert special synchronous pulses between frames and then PLL allows, allows to synchronize frames and get correct images. In 1960s and 1970s, PLL was fabricated as a single chip. This was huge. After that moment, many, many different military and civil applications started to use PLS. Nowadays, every phone, every laptop have many PLS. In 1960s, US military and aerospace agency started to invest money to study PLS. So, several famous classic books on PLS were written by Gardner, Viterbi, who later became co-founder of one of the most famous and popular chip maker for mobile phones, Qualcomm. Also, we should mention book by Stansby on nonlinear analysis and book by Roland Best, which withstood six editions. Now let's dive into PLA structure and study it in details. Consider a problem of frequency synthesis. We have a reference signal and we have a VCO signal. VCO signal should be twice the frequency of reference signal in sync with it. To do that, we can adjust the input of the VCO voltage controlled oscillator and it will oscillate with desired frequency. However, the input frequency may change with temperature or some time or some very other variations. So we need to resynchronize VCO to the input signal. To do that, first we need to divide the signal, output signal of VCO by desired factor, for example by factor of 2. To do that, it's possible to use, for example, D-type flip-flop device. Also, we can make other frequency dividers, but we are not considering it here. It's not important for our study. Next, we need to compare divided signal with original reference signal. To do that, engineers use phase frequency detector with charge pump. How it operates? It has three possible outputs, three states. Positive state, negative state and zero state. Here we consider only falling edges. Every falling edge of the divider will force phase frequency detector state to go to the lower value from positive to zero and from zero to negative, from negative back to negative. And every falling edge of the reference signal will force phase frequency detector to go up to the higher value from negative to zero and from zero to positive. Next, we filter this output of phase detector and get the signal to tune the voltage of VCO and to tune frequency of VCO. Here we consider linear VCO. It means that frequency of the VCO changes linearly with its input. However, there is a catch. If the input of the VCO is too low, it tries to force VCO to oscillate with negative frequency, which is not possible. Therefore, for this output, VCO stops oscillating and outputs constant value, VCO overload. Now okay, now let's go to equations of charge pump PLL. 
loop filter is described by ordinary differential equations. VCO is also described by ordinary differential equations. Uh, frequency divider is a simple division of the phase by some certain factor. So those three elements can be described as a whole with a single system of ordinary differential equations. The problems are with phase frequency detector because it's not a simple linear ODE, it's a switching system. So uh, as a whole system, it can be simulated in the following way. First, we integrate on the constant period of phase frequency detector. When phase frequency detector outputs constant signal, we integrate an ODE until phase frequency detector switches to the next region. So we find this moment and switch to the another ODE, second ODE. Then we integrate until phase reaches some point, phase of VCO or reference signal reaches its period and phase frequency detector switches again. And we go back to first ODE, integrate again, wait for the switching point, go to the second ODE, integrate, go to the third ODE, integrate and etc. This is a direct simulation which is used in many programs like SPICE. The problem is we have to integrate very carefully on each period, not to jump over the switching point. Because switching point are not uniform, we have to calculate these switching points. But how to study this system? Even simulation may be very very long and expensive. Uh, in 1980s, Garner suggested approximation. He said that phase frequency detector may be approximated by analog linear phase detector. So, the whole system can be described approximated by linear system of ordinary differential equations. However, in his book he mentioned that it's important to go back to original direct simulation and check the results, because this linear approximation may lead to long, wrong conclusions, but very important for early stages of design. In 1994, uh, Mark van Paemel, he found out that um, if we use first order filters, then integration become very simple and we can write direct formulas of jumping between switching points. So we have a discrete system, this discrete system is shown here. It has uh, two variables and several parameters. These variables describe current state of the filter and when the switch happened before on the previous step. But in his article, his original article, he made some errors. For example, his algorithm of simulation sometimes led to square root of minus one and stopped working incorrectly. And also, he tried to describe overload of physio and take it into account. But in private emails, he said that it was not enough to use only a single formula to describe a visual, so description of visual overload was incomplete. This was generalized in our paper and where we have a full correct model of charge pump PLA described by a single discrete time system. Another problem is how to study this system. It's a discrete time but it is switching system. So. Uh, we cannot just simply uh, apply Routh Hurwitz because on every sector it may give stability but the whole system may be not stable. So Orla Philly tried to um, study this IML's original system with Lyapunov functions but she didn't take into account visual overload. And in, in the next section, my co-author and co-presenter Renat will talk about local stability and global stability in details. Consider now engineering parameter of the Facebook loop called Holden range. So Holden range is a range of input frequencies. 
such that if reference frequency is from the holding range and frequency of the voltage controlled oscillator is synchronized to it, then this synchronization is stable and VCO tracks the reference frequency. Then we change reference frequency slowly until it hits the holding frequency. Then the voltage controlled oscillator will lose synchronization at this point because the synchronization is not possible anymore. This tracking process must be asymptotically stable and it corresponds to existence of a asymptotically stable equilibrium in our system. Holding range is an important parameter of phase lock loops, but there are several problems with it. First is that we require that VCO is initially synchronized with reference. Second is that uh, limit cycles may exist. Even for a fixed frequency from the holding range, the voltage controlled oscillator may not synchronize to it and start oscillating. This oscillating frequency of the voltage controlled oscillator is undesired. So we need to define another parameter range to avoid these two problems. This range is called pooling range. Here, for arbitrary fixed frequency from a pooling range, and for any initial frequency and the initial state of a voltage controlled oscillator, the phase frequency will synchronize to the reference one. There must be no limit cycles or chaotic behavior. This definition corresponds to global stability of the equilibrium. For charge pump failure, it is more convenient to use not the frequencies, but the periods. These periods are used to define the holding range and pulling range rigorously. Another problem is that uh, overload should be avoided. Thus, we can formulate the following definitions of the holding and pulling range. Finally, the following results were obtained. First, the VCO overload was estimated. For, so, for the reference period smaller than this estimate, there is no overload of the voltage controlled oscillator in a steady state. Second, the holding range estimate was formulated, which corresponds to local stability of the equilibrium. This is an improvement and justifications of res previous results obtained by Paul Courant and Orla Fili. And third is that the pooling, as the pooling range estimate is formulated, which corresponds to global stability and non-existence of limit cycles. This result is an improvement of previous results obtained by uh, Humayon and Razavi. Please contact us by email if you want to collaborate with us, to make research with us. We can meet in our beautiful city and maybe drink some vodka, have some fun, have, make some science and be healthy, make science and goodbye.